Hello, David Hillier here, and I'm going to be giving a short video today on cash flow and how to calculate operating cash flow. There's three different methods that you can use um, to get to operating cash flow, and it's an area where people sometimes get a bit confused. So I'm just going to take you through the three to, uh, three approaches. It gives you the same operating cash flow, and so. Um, you know, without further ado, let, let's just fire through these. So we're going to set up with a very simple um, cash flow stream. Uh, we have sales of 1500 We have costs of 700 And depreciation is 600 So we're going to calculate the income statement from these figures. So just keep these in mind. Sales, 1500 Costs, 700 And depreciation is 600 so if we start off, we can find um, the net income. So the net 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 income is sales minus the costs. So sales minus the costs, we've got fifteen hundred minus seven hundred. That's eight hundred. Then you then take away depreciation. So it's eight hundred minus six hundred, which is two hundred pounds. That's the net income, and then. Oh, not the net income, sorry, that's the earnings before taxes. And so to calculate our tax, then we just basically take the tax rate and multiply it by the earnings before uh, taxes. So it's £200. How do we get £200? It's just 1500 minus 700 minus 600. Multiply by 0.28 and you've got a tax payment of 56. So the net income then is... 200 minus 56 which is 144 pounds so that's net income how do we calculate operating cash flow then well to calculate operating cash flow we get the net income and we just add the depreciation back now one of the calculations that i've got here is i've got the earnings before uh, interest and taxes interest is zero so it's just earnings before taxes you're adding the depreciation on, which is 800, and then you're subtracting the taxes, which is 56. So you're given an operating cash flow of £744. So that's one way of calculating operating cash flow. The other way is to go from the net income. So this is what I calculated in, my, um, in the head. It's the earnings before taxes minus the taxes, which gives us the net income of £144. We then add on any accounting uh, changes. The only accounting change that we've got in this um, example is depreciation. So we add the de depreciation back on. So it's net income plus depreciation. It gives us an operating cash flow of £744. And we call that method the bottom-up approach. If we go to the next method, which is the opposite from the bottom-up approach, it's the top-down approach. The top-down approach, you basically just forget about any of the accounting changes, accounting manipulations, and you only deal with actual cash flow. So sales is a cash, costs are cash, and taxes are cash. So it's sales minus the costs minus the taxes, uh, you end up with 744 again. So that is called the top-down approach. Notice you're getting the same answer. So there's no um, no difference in the end point. It's just how you get there that's the key. Now, the third method is a method which is very important for uh, when we're looking at uh, other more complex capital budget budgeting issues when you're dealing with debt. And what that uh, we're doing here is we're, we're taking out the impact of the tax shield coming from depreciation. If you look at this particular uh, thing, what you've got is you've got um, the sales minus the costs after tax. So it's the after tax sales minus the costs. Uh, so it's 1500 minus 700 multiplied by the 0.72. And that tells you the after cash operating cash flow. And then we add in the tax shield that comes from the depreciation. Now, you might say, well, where does that come from? Well, it comes from the fact that if you charge depreciation, 
that is treated as an expense in the income statement. Since it's an expense, it reduces the profit. And since profit is reduced, the value of the tax is reduced. So if we're wanting to try and capture the impact, the after-tax impact of any accounting figure, and in this case it's depreciation, then what we do is we calculate the tax yield that comes from the depreciation. So it's 600, which is the depreciation amount. It's the 0.28 uh, is the, the tax rate. And that's how much your cash flow is being in this, or your income is being reduced um, because of the depreciation. And we basically add that back on. So looking at this part, this is the after-tax cash flow from the operations. This is the beneficial impact from uh, the depreciation. You add them together and you end up with 744. Now this amount here is what is known as the depreciation tax shield. And you use this depreciation tax shield in a number of different applications in finance. And uh, we will be covering these. So this method, it doesn't seem uh, intuitive uh, up front. Uh, the other two methods, the bottom up and the top down approach, seems much, much clearer. But this is an important method for a lot of the other work that we do uh, later on in the book. So hopefully uh, it's been a very quick video. Uh, and all I've been really trying to do is show you the three different methods that you can use to calculate operating cash flow. My favourite is the bottom-up approach. What I do is I just get to the net income and then I just add back depreciation. If you look at um, the case study for this chapter in Chapter 7, I think it's uh, Section 7.2, uh, you'll see that that's the method that I used. But you can use any method that you want to get to the operating cash flow. So thank you very much.